Hello everyone and welcome back to Rheumatology for Medical Student and Intern. Uh, today we'll come back with our special guest again, Aline. Alright, so how are you doing today? Good, thank you for having me. It sounds like you're very happy because you <laughs> just match into ophthalmology, isn't it? Yes, a little happier than usual today. Yes, so congratulations. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Aline match to ophthalmology, one of the very competitive fields to get in. Actually, that's also somehow we talk about Shoujin today because this is the topic that um, ophthalmologists and rheumatologists, we see patients together. Aline, can you share with us about our patient today? Yes, sure. So today we saw a patient, 30-year-old female, who presented with about six, seven weeks of dry eyes and dry mouth. She felt like her dentist was telling her she has more dental caries. Mm -hmm. And she was having gritty sensation in her ha eyes and having trouble putting in her contact lenses. Um, so she presented to her office. Mm -hmm. You can see the first time when you saw her, you can feel a little bit swollen mm -hmm. in her mouth. In effect, it's quite tender when you touch because those dryness has been such a long time and become swollen and it's quite tender. And that's why they come to see dentists mm -hmm. and then see a family doctor and she come to see us today. What else? What's going on? So looking at her labs that was ordered mm -hmm. by her PCP, we saw that she was positive for ANA, positive for two antibodies that we commonly see in Sjogren's disease, anti-Rho and anti-Law, mm -hmm. SSA and SSB. Yes. And she was negative for anti-Smith antibodies and anti-double-stranded DNA, ruling out lupus. Again, this is quite a typical presentation for Sjogren's syndrome. Uh, you guys see this lab and patient present with those symptoms, and it is likely Sjogren's syndrome, mm -hmm. right? But one thing interesting about this lab, did you just mention that uh, the PCP also tests for lupus, right? Yes. Very nice PCP here. Mm -hmm. He did to make sure this is not um, lupus, so he checked the posture the DNA, and anti-Smith, those are quite um, specific for lupus. Right. Um, so look in general, how do we diagnose Sjogren's? Sure. So Sjogren's disease is usually a clinical diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Patients usually present with eye and oral complaints of dryness. Yes. It's usually inflammation within the salivary glands or the tear lacrimal glands uh, that leads to dryness and this gritty sensation. And so when the patients have that and it's correlated with their antibodies that we find on blood work, we can diagnose Sjogren's disease. But it's very important to rule out other causes. And Sjogren's disease can be a primary or it can be a secondary manifestation of another autoimmune condition. Exactly. And uh, which leads me to wanting to ask you, do you usually see this as a primary or associated with lupus or rheumatoid or some other condition? It also depends on where you practice rheumatology. Mm -hmm. Here in Los Angeles, I usually we see mix. Mm -hmm. Some of them are primary, basically focus on that, like you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it comes with lupus. It come with all the sometimes rheumatoid arthritis as well. All right. So in terms of testing, um, how do we test for Sjogren's syndrome? So there are lots of fancy tests we can use fancy to diagnose tests. <laughs> Sjogren's disease. One of them is Shermer, uh, the Shermer test, which is usually using a sterile filter paper that you place between the eye and on the bottom uh, lower lid, mm -hmm. and you place it in. The patient closes their eye for five minutes, and you you're basically checking the tear production. Exactly. Uh, and usually you check the distance of how much the tear travels, and if it's uh, less than 5 millimeters, that's a positive test. So usually you do it in both eyes, both right? Eyes, yes. Remember, when you do this <laughs> test, you make sure to correlate with all the symptoms, all the right. clinical finding and history. Because a lot of times, as ophthalmologists, you notice um, people may have dry eye. Mm -hmm. Naturally, for all the reasons, it's not um, right. shortens. Um, right. The other test, um, we do... Did you know how we test for saliva glands? Biopsy? Biopsy, wow. That sounds very invasive though. It is very invasive. <laughs> in real life, um, in real practice, rheumatology, we, we really do it. In fact, we still do it in major academic center mm -hmm. uh, a lot of time. But in, in like this, um, private practice, uh, we base our clinical findings and streamer test is more practical. Right. How about the other tests? Have you heard about a test that we look uh, for? graphic of the saliva gland? Yes, the sialography. Yes, so that's actually the way that you actually you can see that picture, isn't it? Right there. Yes. When you see swollen saliva gland, mm -hmm. uh, that's considered diagnosis. But again, those fancy tests like Alin just mentioned, uh, you need to 
correlate with clinical finding, lab, and other symptoms, history from the patient to make a diagnosis of children's. How about sickle syndrome? Can you just tell us a little bit about that? Yes, sickle syndrome is when patients are complaining of dry eyes, called mm -hmm. carotid conjunctivitis. Yes. So basically, dry, gritty feeling in their eyes. Uh, it's the Sjogren syndrome leaving out the manifestations orally. Exactly. So that's the one thing I like you to distinguish between Sjogren's and Sika. That's mm -hmm. the main one. Right. And by the way, when you mentioned about Sjogren, do you know who is Sjogren's? I think Sjogren's is a Swedish ophthalmologist who fabulous, dis fabulous. discovered the syndrome. So you came to the right especially at the moment. Yes. <laughs> In fact, this um, syndrome was um, named after a Swedish doctor, an eye doctor, and because of his um, very precise observation on patients mm -hmm. with dry eyes and other symptoms. Right. It is actually in medicine we name many disease or syndrome after a doctor or scientist mm -hmm. uh, because of their specific attention to these organs. Right. Anything else yeah. you want to share with us today? Sure. So Sjogren's disease, I know we usually treat this with symptomatic care. Mm -hmm. So you can use lubricating drops for the eye or uh, anything to uh, secrete more saliva. In, in ophthalmology, we even do punctal duct closures where we uh, close off the tear drainage so that patients can have more tear in their eyes because it's feeling dry. Mm. But do you use any medication in your clinic to treat these patients, Dr. Tran? Yes. When we diagnose patients with children, um, we depend on the symptom severity mm -hmm. that you mentioned earlier. We really focus on make sure their dry eye and dry mouth comfortable. As an ophthalmologist, you, you can tell how uncomfortable a patient, if he or she is suffering from chronic long-term dry eye. Mm -hmm. But besides that, we try, we can try all the medication. I'm sure you see that the one with today, we will try a new medication to stimulate her saliva production. Do you know what it is? It's called Equosex, uh, that's the brand name. <laughs> and then the other medication depends, we can do NSAID if patient have some pain. Okay. The two most common medications I use are Plaquenil, the famous Plaquenil medication. Right? Interesting. Yes, and then Metotrexate. Uh, so those medications immunosuppress or immunomodulator to control the antibody. Because you know this, by far, I mean, children mm -hmm. syndrome basically is where our body antibody mistakenly attack mm -hmm. the gland around the eyes, lacrimal glands, and also the saliva. And when those glands become inflamed, they become malfunction, and unfortunately the patient have dry eye or dry mouth. Right. And it so, can have very serious consequences, like recurring corneal ulcers, which wouldn't be fun for anyone. Exactly. Yeah. That's not really you guys, especially, <laughs> but I can tell you it doesn't sound fun. Right. A lot of time when I see problem that is, um, we like focusing on the patient we saw today mm -hmm. was um, referred to see ophthalmologist as well and we usually we co-manage the patient together mm -hmm. and again talking about Plaquenil we make sure that you guys check <laughs> if patient taking Plaquenil uh, make sure they don't have what? Plaquenil toxicity exactly <laughs> which we talk about that topic um, in a different episode right? yes anything else Aline? that's all for me Dr. Tran alright mm -hmm. so thank you guys and again welcome to Rheumatology for Medical Student and Intern and we will see you next episode.